So let's talk about shorting. Shorty comes in many ways and techniques, and normally I would talk about this much later in our course, but accidental shortings could cause problems, unexpected results, or it could help us make our code much cleaner or more, let's say, robust as a word. So shorting comes in many forms. We're going to talk about a few of them. The first one we're going to talk about is this uh, F else that we're seeing over here. Notice that this F and all these else ifs are connected to each other. Do we really need to do that? Well, obviously, no. Our application would still run correctly without all of these else's, right? We could have just made them directly become if statements. And this worked out perfectly fine because each one of those statements is different. Is this correct to do this or not? Well. It doesn't matter, at least not at the level we're at. But normally what you're making it do is making the computer do all these questions one after the next, even though you know that the month is actually a specific value. And in this case, month was four, right? So after it reaches four, we know it's going to run this and none of the other ones because they're all different values. But the problem is, you're making the computer do all of them because they're separate if statements. So even though this is true, the computer cannot think ahead of time. So you cannot see that month has already, it, well, the, the month variable was utilized in every one of them. And the only one that was being compared to four was here and nowhere afterwards. It cannot know the future. Well, not the future. It cannot read ahead is what I'm trying to say. So the first thing we do is connect all of these if else's to kind of short it. Basically means the moment, starting at the top, the moment one of these if statements becomes true, so the moment it reaches number four, and this body of it gets executed, the statement inside gets executed, it will skip everything after line 57. Well, 57, 58. So from 59 to the 76, all of this is going to be ignored by the computer. So we're making our computer much faster to process by shorting what it's going to do from there on, right? So notice this and this one, number two, they're both if statements. So if it's one or two, it doesn't matter. It will have to do it, both of them, because they're not connected. So this is the first way we could short them is by having our if statements connected. So if that's true, this that it could short and it would stop from going further down, now we have to remember that what our first question is and what our question later on is, is important to have in a correct order and the priority. Let's see what that means. Now, if we look in this scenario, we have an age, and based on the age, let's say we're in a bar or something, and based on this age, we want to output one of these statements, right? So if the age is bigger than 18, we want to say, you may pass, you may come in. If the age is less than or equal to 18, well, actually, let's change this to bigger than and this one less than, we want to let them know that you're too young, you still can't, you're, you need to grow a bit before you could come in. And lastly, if they're at 17, you could pass in one year. We want to let them know a feedback again that you could get there in a year. So if we run this right now at age 18, it's pretty obvious. We're going to say you may pass. Now, if I do this at, let's say, five year old, again, it's obvious you are too young. Right. What would happen when I want to write 17 in this case? You'll notice that we're going to get a problem because, again, we shorted it. It's going to write, you are too young. So even though we have this else if that says when the age is 17, print this, well, we're never going to reach it because we're shorting it. Shorting basically means that the computer is never going to reach this code, so it doesn't know that this age equal to 17 actually exists. And this could become a problem because... My question before was any age under 18 
and that includes 17. So this is important. This is the reason why we have to think about our logic and the sequence of this logic. What should I ask first and what should I ask later on? A good answer to this would be to always have the precision first or, and I'm going to show you another case soon, or the one that takes re less processing first so that we can make our application much faster. This is more advanced techniques, but we're going to talk about them right now. So to fix this error, we would need to bring this one right before that guy. Let me press enter here. So now, because 17 is included in this one, we want it to be first so that if this one runs, it's not because the user is 17, but it's because any other age than 17 would be this one, right? So we, again, computer goes top to bottom, left to right. So first question, second question, third question. More precise here. We could even put that on the first part. So let's run it again. So now you're going to see that we're going to say you can pass in one year, right? And this is what we want to do. So this is a common mistake that happens uh, with new unexperienced people when you start off. And that the order that you put your questions could kind of contain the next question. So you got to be careful for this accidental short. The next shorting is our logical shorting, logical operators. When we have questions with and or ors, depending on the answer of the first, the left part, the first part, depending on that answer, the computer might not even look at the next part. This could be, uh, this is the, uh, this is the computer trying to optimize the code, making it um, faster. So a lot of times the computer will just ignore the other side. And why would it ever do this? Well, because let's say in the case of an end, right? In the case of an end, for it to turn out to be true, both sides needs to be true, right? The sky needs to be blue and I have my football for me to go and play football. So in that case, if the left side is false, it doesn't matter what's here because it will always give out false, right? So in this case, it's a shorting right before. Why would we use this? Let's get into that in a second. I just want to talk about the or, which is the same thing. In the case of an or, in the case of an or, you need to have one side as true for it to be true. So we don't really care about what the other side is. Could have also been this is false and this side is true. Well, then it would be true, all right? So until one side is true, we don't really need to finish or ask the question on the other side. So a great example is if I have a basketball or if I have a, uh, I don't know, cricket ball, I could go outside and play. It doesn't matter which ball I have, I could still go outside and play. And this is what's important. Why would we want to do this? Or why would you want to utilize this? And by utilize, uh, I'll, well, let's get into it. Well, the reason is, as our code will progress, sometimes the condition that we put here, or sometimes the code that we put here, is big. Right now, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a Boolean. But in the future, it's going to be big. It could be processing 100 lines of code just inside of the left part of the end or on the right side of the end. So one of the techniques we utilize, it's shorting. We make sure, we make sure, let's say as in this case, we make sure that the left side, it's a much smaller processing or something that would be quick before we do the right side. Why would we want to do that? Well, if this is false, if the left side is already false, there's no reason to do the big processing task that we need to do to determine the right side. In this case, we are optimizing our code to run a bit faster than normally. Same thing goes with ORs. If the left, uh, if the left side is already true, well, we don't really care about the right side, right? So we could, again, do something super small on the left side, and it gives back true, well, then the computer will just automatically ignore the right side. 
So this is a technique we'll talk about more when we go a bit further down the line. But as we were talking about accidental shorting, this is also another good technique to know for now. All right, guys, see you in the next video.